good afternoon everyone uh, we are now starting our fourth session of the day uh, hosted by noida chapter on the topic of the story of a scrum master uh, it's going to be a panel discussion and we have a wonderful set of panelists with us uh, we have nitendra kashvi and mukun with us and nitendra is going to be our moderator as well uh, before we begin this session i would like to uh, start uh, with uh, with a thank you note to our founding sponsor innovation roots it is a leading consulting and training service provider helping organization to achieve business agility and beyond it is one of the leaders and pioneers of niche publishing services and well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders authors and creators please visit www.innovationroots.com uh, to see their upcoming trainings and summits thank you i would also like to thank our sponsor jail So Jail is a product offering from Tata Consultancy Services Limited. It is a purely cloud-based enterprise agile planning tool along with DevOps capabilities. Enterprises can use Jail to adopt agile practices or scale across multiple Scrum and Kanban teams using enterprise scaling frameworks such as Safe, Disciplined, Agile, Less, and More. You can try out Jail for free up to 20 users for one year by signing up at Jail.io or reach out to us for any inquiries or exclusive product demo. Check out the Jail page on Agile Network India website for more information. Thank you. Now I would like to pass on the mic to the moderator of today's session, uh, Nitendra. Over to you. Well, uh, thanks, Prakash. Uh, thanks for a uh, wonderful uh, discussion over which we heard um, previously, and also um, looking forward to the session and the uh, AI for this platform where we can express our experience to the rest of the audience. So first of all. Uh, I'll welcome all the audience, and you all are requested to just go on mute. And if you have any questions uh, during the session, you can park this in a parking lot. You can ping in on the chat, and we will try our best to accommodate as much as question which by end of the session. So quickly, I'll start uh, about myself. So, hello everyone again. Uh, myself, Nitendra. I have around 14 years of career exposure with the different IT sets of the industry. I am through as list where I uh, primarily I'm working as a transformation coach for one of the largest merchandise organization across the globe. I'm also helping team to enable their agile journey and maturing their journey throughout the agile practice they are following. I am also expert in managing safe projects and parallelly I am uh, working as a scrum master for one of the project where i'm supporting day india so that will be a very quick brief about myself now i'll pass this mic, mic to uh, kashvi she is our next panelist so kashvi over to you would be happy to get about your brief okay so i am kashvi and i have around 15 years of experience and out of it seven um years of experience in working on agile projects that is mainly scrum kanban and also safe agile so my main job is to um, i work as an agile sme and my job also involves uh, conducting trainings knowledge sessions assessments of projects and helping them in maturing uh, to their agile journey i'm really passionate about helping our clients in their agile transformations and apart from that i am also keen on learning new technologies that is related to cloud so yeah that's all from my side for today yeah thanks kashvi i'm um, good to know about you and uh, definitely your experience will help audience to get more about uh, the questions we are coming through um now we'll move to our next panelist mr mukund so mr mukund is also coming with uh, around 10 years of work experience with industry So, without wasting time, I'll invite Mukun. If you can quickly brief about your journey. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Nitin. So, uh, myself, Mukun. Uh, I have approximately uh, nine years of experience uh, in IT industry, and uh, I have seen the uh, organizations uh, embracing agile, and uh, and also have been a part of it. So, I have worked as a scrum master, as a QA lead, uh, also. and uh, i'm a agile enthusiast uh, i have my uh, website as well uh, with name tutorialguruji.com uh, that is uh, dedicated to agile so yeah that is that is me thank you okay thanks mukund <clears throat> okay so now we'll uh, quickly begin uh, with uh, the set of questions which we have received from the audience also and uh, through on the online survey where uh, we are looking forward to get some more insight from our panelists 
so the first question goes to um, that okay being a scrum master it looks very lucrative and uh, everywhere in industry we are able to experience that okay everyone is talking about a scrum master a scrum master what what do you think how the scrum master growth path looks like so mukund if you can help us to explain based on your experience what do you think how a scrum master growth path looks like yeah so a scrum master is a uh, you know it looks like a very easy job when you are not uh, uh, working as a scrum master but as soon as you uh, put it uh, uh, scrum master shoes you will realize uh, how important the role is and uh, how challenging the role is it is not just only about uh, uh, being the uh, skills the technical skills you have but you also have the soft skills so it is it is very challenging i would say okay thanks um, anything uh, kashvi would like to add what do you think how the growth path looks like as scrum master so yeah as mukund as uh, as well said it is definitely a challenging role and uh, it does require soft skills also so i would like to add that it's it's about taking care of your team uh, helping them remove your impediments whereas you know keeping your stakeholders also meeting the requirements of your stakeholders so the scrum master really needs to have a balance between both of these so that your team is also not overburdened where and keeping in mind that you meet your sprint goals your release goals as well so yeah it is quite a challenging role i would emphasize once again okay uh, thanks kashri and uh, mukund so I, i would also like to add feel with my experience because if i will look back to the industry and the survey which we have recently um, seen from the gartner or, or also from the zile samurai that almost 70 plus um 70% plus industry across the globe they are using agile while they are using agile definitely uh, how agile is successful because the contribution done by the team members who work and they are adapting agile and what is the role of a scrum master they are facilitating they are ensuring the practice and methodologies are follows correctly when we talk about the growth path definitely being a scrum master it is not a easy job definitely you guys have emphasized that yeah, this is really a challenging but when it comes to challenge it enables up another door so when you will lead to your challenge you will have a ample of options where you can mature yourself and you can go and adapt other roles so based on the challenging understanding you can be a good coach you can be a um, you can say the mentor for the team member you can adapt as a agile coach role you can also um, go for a product owner role so these are the growth paths if you will look forward for the as a scrum master so not only limited to working as a scrum master you have other opportunity also to go and grow, look forward as a growth growth path for it so thanks kashvi and uh, mukund so along with so you know that when we talk about the growth path and when we talk about the scrum master definitely it comes with the certain challenges we talk about challenges that yes these are the challenges the scrum master have face so being a scrum master working in industry over decades i can see that uh, what are the biggest challenges or risk you have faced and what was your mitigation plan how you have helped your team to go over from those challenges and what was your action plan if um, so i would uh, definitely request uh, mukund um, if you can help us to understand and uh, share some of the case study or examples what kind of challenges you have faced and what was your action plan to overcome those so mukund over to you yeah so uh, when we talk about the uh, challenges uh, i faced personally as a scrum master so i would say that uh, the lack of agile training uh, to the teams and not only to the teams but to the management as well so it it has become very difficult when when a scrum master is talking about uh, you know implementing its uh, uh, vision uh, mentoring team and how the things should move in agile and since the team is not equipped with the knowledge so they are not able to get it that what scrum master is saying the management is not able to understand how much important it is and what should be done in in this agile scenario so so for example uh, i would uh, give one real life example that in, in one of my organizations the team has just newly built and uh, i was the scrum master there so the team was expecting me to remove impediments for them 
so they wanted me to to write emails to client if there is some you know database failure if the column is not present they wanted me to you know communicate with them so it had become very difficult for me you know uh, very challenging for me that it is not the work of scrum master to do such kind of things so so as a as a what you can say <clears throat> resolution what i started is that i started coaching team on a daily basis so so i started writing uh, short emails giving pointers what what is the role what should be done here what uh, what is expected from team and at the same time so once the team is there they started getting it so then i started uh, you know pushing management as well so they were also not very much uh, trained in that so so i had to you know stand up stand up to my grounds and tell them that no this is not done this way this is the agile practices and we should do this way so 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 sometimes i have to you know include agile coaches as well but it it worked well so scrum master as a scrum master i stood my ground and yes i uh, helped them understand it and uh, train the team so it worked for me yeah uh, so thanks for coming it's, uh, it was really helpful so um before we move on so kashri anything from your end you would like to add from the certain challenges you may have faced in your journey yes i also uh, have faced many challenges when i joined the project so uh, for example uh, i get many requests for you know changing the sprint length for example if it, if it has been a constant sprint length for two weeks so suddenly they want it okay let it be for three weeks because of some refresh of the environment or maybe you know we don't have capacity so you have to uh, sometimes it's okay like once in a while but you have from your side as a scrum master you have to make sure that you know the team adheres to the agile practices and so that becomes a quite tough uh, to convince your team and even your product owner and uh, i have seen reluctance from team for creating your you know sub tasks logging hours and all they are they own them or mostly say that we are doing our job so we don't want to get into the nitty gritty of uh, scrum and you know uh, because we have other jobs also to do but you, as a scrum master you have to ensure that okay uh, these things are important if you want to um, measure some metrics etc as well and so these are some challenges and if if you see from the management side if your team is new and your product owner is also new to agile so i have seen challenges regarding even writing stories so as a scrum master you have to have uh, have a helping hand to him and make him understand like okay this is the chunk of work we can do in a sprint this is how we do the slicing of the user stories and we cannot we have to uh, take that amount of work that can be completed in a sprint not something uh, that you know we can cover over months so uh, i uh, as a uh, as a training to product owner also that is uh, something uh, yeah is a challenging part as a scrum master or as well yeah so um, so if i quickly summarize about um, um, the challenges you guys have faced uh, so what i understood from upon that the maturity of your team where the team is not ready to understand the basic principle of agile or essence of agile that how you coach and how we um, do the coaching for the team is one area over commitment of the team and they are not able to fulfill the requirement from uh, required um, um, or you can say the fulfillment of the product owner is also a mom challenge what i have seen also in my career that there are many um, other challenges when it comes when it comes about your cultural barrier where you have um, you are working in a project and lot of team um, and even a um, lot of project we have experienced that people are adapting agile just for sake of doing agile so they are asking that okay everywhere every people are talking about agile let's start agile without thinking that okay what it can help and how it is so the biggest impediment that if you are doing agile without understanding and realizing the value and the impact you are going to do that is the biggest impediment i have faced so since i am transforming coaching team over period i have seen that people most of the people in the project and from the leadership if their vision is clear that why they are adapting agile then you have very good process where you can set up a training plan you can give a cultural change idea you can team a motivate team you can groom team around agile but if your team and organization is not helping you to do this if your culture is not as much as encouraged 
then the challenges are definitely very big for a scrum master. So thanks, Kashri and Mokum. I quickly summarized about thoughts which you have given. So now, when we are coming back from uh, these two or three questions which we have discussed about that how it's a growth path looks like when we talk about the challenges the next thing and it is a very important thing which i have experienced last one and a half years you can say that people are working from remote remote due to this pandemic situation or there are other um, regions also where people have adapted working from home or they are working from remote due to their security and the concerns so being a scrum master how you ensure when the people and your team member work as a remote you have enough motivation enough support as a scrum master you are giving to your team members so kashri anything uh, would like to add on your viewpoints so uh, uh, i would say that uh, it personal connects uh, apart from your daily stand ups personal connects with your team members will definitely help you you know uh, maybe they are facing some real life uh, personal issues and uh, maybe you are not able to help them but yeah certainly uh, uh, connecting with them will you know give them assurance that okay my team is with me and uh, also what we started in our uh, project was like virtual coffee connects where we don't really talk about work because um, it's always work work and work so we just talk them about you know their if they are facing any personal issues or any challenges uh, that they would like to share or only on or also any relaxing moments or something they are looking forward to do in future so such things you know help to connect with the teams and uh, for, uh, for example in your retrospectives also uh, we do a uh, sprint a champion kind of thing or uh, maybe we give kudos also to the team member who actually helped you you know in your uh, challenging time so th these things actually help in connecting virtually also though there is no uh, face to face meeting these days but yeah at these tip bits actually help uh, to connect with your team virtually these days yeah so great uh, kashya thanks uh, it is really important that okay how um, virtually the team is getting support from the scrum master or the re required team member support mukund anything from your end would like to add yeah so uh, kashvi uh, uh, you know highlighted a very good point that uh, you know connecting personally with team and uh, you know assuring them that that they uh, we are with you uh, in in these times so i have personally uh, followed the one principle always uh, uh, that whenever i connect with my team or whenever i am in any team you know uh, i make sure that i treat you know people as people so it is it is a terminology that okay these are human resources i don't consider like you know resources so i i consider as a human so if you talk to uh, people like people uh, tell them your problems listen to their problems then it makes a, a personal bonding and it it not only improves work but it also you know uh, uh, improves people's you know mental state uh, they feel uh, strengthened they feel motivated so uh, i i work like that way always okay so thanks uh, thanks mukund thanks kashri so uh, I'll, I'll just add few things here that because uh, you know that in this pandemic situation it is really tough and the uh, few of the team members they really are facing some challenges at their own or in their social or the relation so being a scrum master the most important that how empathic you are reason because we have seen that one uh, team member of my uh, the last sprint uh, who went um, uh, who was tested positive for the covid and also he had a very critical task which had to complete it due to the demo was approaching and we were also reaching towards our quarter milestone but being a scrum master what is your role definitely you know that your team member is facing some of the very critical life threats that of the covid he is facing some challenges at home he is not able to contribute but again, uh, the fear of um, his back end that, okay, yes, if I will not complete, then organization will push him. He will uh, have some uh, different consequences of it. But being a scrum master, I have ensured whatever and everything which is happening at your professional front, you should not bother about. You should first think about yourself. So how you can empathize your team members, even in the critical situation, how you can boost their morale. Normally, 
is my practice that every day in the morning at first thing i normally send a whatsapp message to every team member and i say even if you are okay if you are not okay just send a message or you can like my message that either you or your family member is safe if you are doing well if you are comfortable working today so it is not something that being a scrum master only my job is to get my sprint completed 100 percent also to make sure my team is motivated enough they are feeling comfortable they are feeling comfortable from the organization and from the team perspective then even if they are not able to contribute some we are there to support them and how you do that is the best thing your interpersonal skills ensuring the team member are comfortable if they are not comfortable even by hook or crook if you are successful for this sprint next time you are meant to be failed reason because people will always feel pressure so removing the pressure on the back of the mind from your team member is also a very good tactic or technique you can say as a scrum master you should adapt and in this tough time definitely this is the most critical things we, we do and I'm, I'm proudly say that after coming back of one and a half months of leave, the team member is still shining like a star and he's doing like uh, what we have expected from him. So this is the very small, small things being a scrum master, we are expected to work collaboratively with the team, ensuring that either we are working in a remote, where our boards are updated, our information is reaching on time to time to our stakeholder, our product owners informed what is going through. and don't feel shy that if your sprint is getting uh, not getting completed if you have the valid reason if you can help product owner to give a confidence although my story is not completed that we are sufficient capable enough to complete this in next sprint so the confidence your empathy your interpersonal these are the things that works well in your remote kind of environment now that is uh, really important to know that in remote time, but again, we work in industry and every leadership has some expectation from their team members. When we walk about the top, top leadership, they expect that if the 10 or 15 member or the 20 member team member working together, if eight or team member work as a sprint, how the sprint looks like, what are their success plan, what kind of metrics, they can see they to realize that okay they if this matrix is working well that we are on track so these type of things comes in the stakeholders mind so when we talk about the stakeholders mind they expect some kind of reports to be published to them so if i am a stakeholder or if you are considering somebody as a stakeholder and you need to share some metrics to him to help them to understand how we are growing how we are doing where we are stuck which kind of metrics you guys are using in your day in day out so kashvi uh, would like to hear from you that which kind of metrics you are sharing to your stakeholder okay so to be honest my client is really not uh, looking forward for any metrics but yeah we uh, the simple ones that we really use is the velocity and the burn down charts because the Velocity is basically helping you to see that how your team is maturing enough and in your agile journey and how much they are able to deliver in a sprint. So, velocity and the uh, burn down charts, I would like to say, and running tested features as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, like how much you are able to deliver. So, as I said, that uh, the management in my project currently doesn't favor much metrics, so we go with the minimum for now. Yeah, thanks, Kashi. So we'll uh, ask same question to Mukon. So Mukon, which kind of metrics you are using in your day and day out? Yeah, so uh, as that? yeah, so uh, as stated by Kashi, I agree. So uh, as a on a daily basis, uh, you know, we keep track of the uh, burn down chart that uh, it helps us uh, as a team uh, to track uh, exactly where we are and uh, where we are headed. And uh, as a you know, as a whole, uh, if we look at the velocity chart. That okay, uh, whether the team is uh, consistently uh, uh, performing, uh, the velocity uh, of uh, the team is consistent, or they are you know lacking somewhere. They need some help, or uh, whether they are overcommitting, or what is happening. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Mukund. Uh, thanks for sharing this. So, see, uh, so Kashvi has um, expressed that burn down, burn up chart, velocity trend, and also uh, the similar track we have heard from the Mukund also. So, what I have practiced, uh, although because these are the very important metrics which you have used. 
few of the uh, next metrics which I have used for the business value diagram. So what I have experienced uh, while meeting to stakeholders that uh, even the one up and down velocity if they are sharing, they are uh, kind of resist that, hey, this is something that I'm able to get it from uh, my the metrics board also. So what additional you can give? So I have started giving the few more uh, additional metrics that way the business value diagram. So being a stakeholder that if my stakeholder understand that the value which is expected from customer is delivered. So I think that we are on track. Even after doing all the things, my velocity is super. I am doing maintaining my bond up, bond down, but I'm not able to meet the expected outcome and the value expected by customer. Then definitely um, our entire efforts which we are putting in spend is not that successful that as customer expects. So business value diagram is also very much important. Another is the net promoter. So net promoter is what? So everyone is working in a sprint and they are thinking that, okay, what they are doing, they are re um, um, releasing one of the shippable product by the end of the two weeks of a sprint, they are going for review. But is that your customer is going to recommend your output to some of their stakeholders? Is that someone can vouch the outcome you have delivered to your customer? So the one, the customer is watching about your success to their stakeholders. That is a net promoter that is helping your entire journey sending to the next level. So along with the other metrics which we are using in our day in day out, I will strongly recommend to go for the business value and the net promoter because that is directly linked with the stakeholders and the customer's mind. So I believe that uh, everyone will agree with uh, what I am saying. So Kashri, anything uh, you would like to add if you think it is a uh, real meaningful for them? So Kashri, I believe that uh, you are, you guys are okay, Nothing right? Yeah, we lost. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So now, so we have discussed about that, how it is growth path looks like. Then we discuss about the real time challenges, what we are facing. Then we also heard about the kind of metrics that we are uh, sharing to the management. We are discussed about that. Okay. Being a remote, how we should help our team to be energetic. Okay. Now as being a scrum master, definitely I have some more responsibility to play and if i have a additional team member whom i need to report that is something that we see that yes i feel that insecure that if i have to report somewhere to someone so i have recently went through one of the question which i heard that okay if as a scrum master i am reporting to a project manager do i have a psychological safety for the project do you think that a scrum master will overturn my responsibility and the expectation of a scrum master by a project manager is different. How you feel secure or unsecure if a scrum master reporting to project manager? So I will hear from um, Mukund. So Mukund, what is your point of view? If being a scrum master, I need to report to project manager. Do you feel, should we feel uh, psychological safety of our efforts. So, Nithin, uh, you know, uh, at the the position you are putting Scrum Masters into, it will, you know, it will be really like some intimidating for him. But uh, let me clarify on that. So, so Agile is based on the uh, principles of, you know, transparency. So, so it 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 happens that everyone is aware that what is the situation of a project at any current point of time. So whether it is a team member or whether it is a higher, higher management people, anyone. So everyone will have the same information. So if the scrum master is reporting to project manager, he need not be, uh, you know, neither needs to be afraid or need to be, you know, relaxed. So he must report what the situation is. He must be transparent. He must be honest and he should not hide anything. Neither he should you know, exaggerate anything. So I would say that it, it, it can be helpful for him if he you know, makes the project manager aware in advance that this is the impediment we are going to face and the team is going to you know, uh, have some difficulty. So it's better that we plan in advance. You know? So 
I, I, I would uh, I would say that there is no need of uh, Scrum Master to feel relaxed or afraid in such condition. He should, you know, work like, you know, and just work like the Scrum Master, you know, nothing else. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So thanks. Uh, thanks, Mukund. You have pointed really well that if you are following through Agile, you are working in the value and um, um, you are putting all the best practices of Agile. You are ensuring the team is uh, doing what is expected. So I don't think there is any fear it should be or any shifty kind of concerns. Reason because even a Scrum Master reporting to anyone. If I am performing, the Scrum Master is performing the job which is expected from him. I don't think there should be any fear kind of thoughts. Great. Uh, good to know, uh, uh, Mukund. So uh, considering the time, uh, I'll uh, only take one more question and we, then after we'll hand over mic to uh, audience for their question if they will have. So now when we discuss about the psychological safety, then definitely these are the terms and these are the things we normally discuss in the retros. Retro, I believe everyone have heard and if you are practicing Agile or even uh, with, um, if when before Agile. So retrospective is the very key, you can say the ceremony that we are following. Now, I have heard about there is a oops wall. So if somebody know about this oops wall, if somebody doesn't know about oops wall, I will share a link to understand about the what this oops wall. But my question is about is that oops wall targeting individual helping and asking individual failure in this retrospective is an ideal practice or we should avoid if it is ideal practice why and if we should avoid why we should avoid and parallel to the next question the same do we have any good practice or the tools which you can use in your retrospective so i will ask this question to mukund so do you think oops wall is really beneficial in the retro or we should do we shouldn't do yeah so uh then it 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 is you know uh i would say oops wall it's something like that people should own their you know weaknesses and uh, they should uh, they should be able to uh, accept that what mistakes they did but at the same time it demands the same commitment from everyone else so in the retrospective it it might become a, a point of you know a finger pointing kind of thing but retro, retrospective is not like that the retrospective tells that the the what what was the collective outcome of the team what as a team the it should improve or what as a team they achieved so if if we combine uh, oops wall in retrospective it might so there is a very thin line so it might uh, uh, turn into uh, uh, you know uh, pointing fingers at individual yeah so you have rightly uh, rightly mentioned that everyone has to own their uh, own the um, credits demerits and uh, the learning path they are looking forward but def definitely the ops wall although it was uh, picked by one of my uh, team member uh, in my last session they were asking that how the ops wall looks like for them so that is definitely it is not recommended that we should have the ops wall in our um, retrospective but in parallel that even if there is no oops wall and if we have some concerns that should be called out not by the name of individual by the group reason because in agile we don't work individually we are working as a team we have six seven team members working together and even it is a achievement or it is a failure that should be born and shared by everyone rather individuals so all the action item path should be decided in terms of so that everyone can contribute to that action and the next time when we will start this sprint we will definitely have a back of mind that what went didn't went well in our last why oops wall, wall was expected and how we can overcome those kind of challenges the next part of my question was that is there any other tool methods practice that we should follow in the retro so i will uh, emphasize that every ALM tool, either you are using Jira, Kanban, Rally, VSTS, Azure, any of the ALM tool you work in your Agile, everyone has their own retro retrospective base. How you customize based on the maturity of your team, how you work, which kind of questions you are asking in your retro, retro meetings. And 
if you are not able to complete the actions which is getting decided in the retro i don't think there will be any value of doing retro by anything so do use retro any kind of retro tools you are using there are n numbers of tools on the googles you can find but i would strongly recommend to use your alm tool and use it as on the best so that you will have all the things on the same place and you would be able to counter all kind of challenges and risk issues you have faced so that's something that i will vouch for the retro my last question of the day and definitely it is a very important that if i am working as a scrum master in a group in a project in a sprint do i need a agile coach add on the scrum master along with sorry along with the scrum master so do you think a project need a style coach and a scrum master together if yes why if you don't think then why not so kashri i would uh, love to hear from you do do you think that a project need a scrum master and agile coach together so in my opinion that uh, the projects really don't need the agile coach and the scrum master i believe that it is the same role if you have attended icc agile coach foundation course they also tell you that you know agile coach and scrum master there is not much difference it is just the organizations that create these rules but yeah as a scrum master you have to ensure that uh, you know if your scrum master is good enough and mature enough and it, 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 he is already helping your uh, team in you know um, uh, maturing in your agile journey and is able to remove the impediments for your team is able to convince your stakeholders and uh, so i think a scrum master is Uh, good enough for your team, and uh, we do we do not really need you know the created role of agile coach. So, in my opinion, uh, scrum master will definitely be uh, good for a team. Okay, thanks, Kasi. Um, um, I believe it is a self-explanatory, and you have explained really well that okay, if you have the uh, scrum master and the maturity is there on the team, I don't need a separate agile coach for my project. so that's hold of my questions uh, for the today uh, although we have very limited time but i would uh, request uh, prakash that uh, if you can open the session and if we have any question which we can answer quickly so in audience if you have some question would like to ask from this audience or from the panelist i would request to unmute yourself and um, ask the question Do we have um, any other questions from anyone? Yeah, yeah. Hi, this is Girish here. Uh, yeah, thanks. Hi, it was a very good discussion. Uh, one question I had was, you know, uh, for retrospective, after mm -hmm. a certain point of life, like four or five retrospective, it becomes repetitive in the sense, you know. So how to keep that enthusiasm going, or is there any different way of uh, doing the retro? Any thoughts on that? Yeah. So, so Girish, thanks for pointing this question because this is really important, and we have seen, and uh, I have also experienced that if you are working in a project for long, and you have done the four or five retrospective throughout in your uh, um, release, or you can the journey, that people feel that it is a waste of time that going and discussing the same thing. So, being a scrum master, it is our responsibility to ensure that a scrum master is a valuable discussion. so get prepare yourself for scrum um, the retrospective before you join the call what normally i does i prepare list of achievements we have done throughout my sprints all the list of achievements it could be small to the bigger whichever you feel comfortable also i will first will emphasize and encourage team to come up with their own ideas rather i will put team that okay hey you should do this you you have not completed this this was the challenge this. rather i go and ask question so normally what is my steps i first start the call and i appreciate every individual to put their time and efforts to complete the sprint then after i ask about is that something they feel they they could have done better and next thing i ask about is something action item which you have feel that if you have not done better what is your action plan rather i put the action plan for you next things sympathy if some people they may or may not have experienced well during the sprint you need to shoulder them 
you need to help them to understand because he or she is not working alone into the sprint so this scrum retrospective is very important where you are meeting team not only to highlight their gray area you are helping appreciating their efforts realizing that how valuable they are what kind of action plan that we can create which kind of knowledge sharing and the knowledge transfer they need how as a scrum master or, or as a group we can help them to grow these kind of things one will start people will never feel that that is monotonous or the add-on meeting for them and it will help them to join with more energy and the more eagerness so curious if uh, does it make sense to you yeah, yeah absolutely i think yeah wonderfully said uh, yeah that's a lot of good insights yeah thank you great uh, Nitin, so, may i ask you a question please yeah, yeah sure sure uh, often uh, uh, i hear everybody hears about business value and mm -hmm. it sounds to me at least a more a philosophical world because my question is how do you know what is the business value and knowing means quantifiable so that you can monitor and track its delivery this is my question okay uh, so if uh, i am uh, clearly understood your question to understand that how i'll ensure that business value is getting delivered as expected if i quickly summarize this now my question is how to know what what business value customer is expecting quantifiable so that we can tell the team this is what is to be delivered and monitor it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, Akish, uh, it is very important and very nice thing that, okay, is there any quantifiable business value that way? So, it is, uh, I will go back uh, one step back while we create our backlog. So, when we will create our backlog, we always ensure that, okay, what are the customer business value and their priority comes when we are picking the sprints. While we are defining our sprints we are creating our sprint goal and a sprint goal is always in line with the what business is expecting to be delivered in our two or three weeks of a sprint and being a product owner i will always ensure that if i am putting any of the sprint business goal which is not in line with the business expectation and the priority i believe that the sprint goal cannot achieve or cannot um, driven through any of the outcome business is expecting. So it is important for a scrum master to help product owner to refine their backlog. So their priority and the business value is in line with the priority while picking the sprint, while creating the sprint goal, we ensure that the priority and the business goal is in line. You have created your DOD, understanding the business goal, business objectives while doing the review after two or three weeks sprint you check your dod because your dod has a direct inline implication of the business goal decided by customer once you are meeting that i don't think that you need any quantifiable item because all the expected outcome will be there that means definition of what is to be done in each story or sprint means delivery of business value yes yeah i agree with you Thank you. Yeah. So thanks, um, uh, Shia. Thanks, uh, ANI, for this wonderful um, session. And thanks, audience, uh, for being uh, so nice to hear us and uh, asking questions. So we will come back again. And uh, it was very wonderful session. So thanks, Anna, Anol, and uh, Mukund, and the Kashvi. And thanks, Shia. So over to you. We are good. Thank you so thanks. much. Thank you. Thank you, ANI. Thank you.